Hi, Dave. How are you today? Hey, Mike. Not bad. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Thanks for coming. Thanks for inviting us. Of course.
Hello and welcome to this special joint meeting of the Disability Advisory Board and the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board uh, tonight, November 19th, 2020 at 7.30 p.m. Today uh, we have an attendance. I'll, I'll have Mike Brody uh, read off the roster for the Park Board. Hi, uh, yeah, for the Park and Rec Board, we have uh, David Malinowski, uh, Dennis Wisnowski, um, uh, Michael Brody and Michael Blundy and representing the Board of Supervisors is James McCartney. Okay, and David, would you introduce the Disability Advisory Board? Yes, we have Lisa, Dave Rogers and David Mann. Present. Thank you. And so today to get started, this is just a follow up. Um, we've been through a number of um, steps as we go through the this uh, feasibility planning for the pool. Um, before COVID hit, we did have a public meeting where we saw a presentation uh, similar to what you'll see tonight. Um, we The public had an opportunity to give some feedback. Um, ordinarily, we would take that feedback and uh, Brent Boyer, who is here tonight um, to present, would pull that all together into one presentation, then present it to the joint boards. But because of the gap due to COVID almost, I don't know, eight months or so, um, we decided that he would represent the initial concepts, let the boards give feedback and then come back with a final plan with everybody's feedback um, involved. So right now, this is what's happening tonight. Brent's going to give a presentation to the boards. Everybody will be able to give a little bit of feedback before we move into the next step. Um, he's going to give the complete presentation, then we'll open up to the boards for questions. So Brent, if you are available and if everybody else could just mute your com uh, computer video. Yes, can, can everyone, you can hear me okay, Monica? Yes. Besides the large gap in, in time since the initial presentation, um, we, we were also aware that not everyone was able to see it. So we wanted to, resubmit the initial presentation. I'm going to do a condensed version. It took almost two hours to go through the whole thing. There was four different versions. The one that gained the most, uh, seemed to get the most support um, in the public meeting was concept number one. We'll, we'll focus more on that and, and condense the others and try to keep this down. And I can expand as much as anyone has questions, but I I know, I know these can be very tedious on, in this setting. So, Monica, I can only see your name. Is, do you have the presentation up? Brent, yeah. I'm, I'm opening it right now. Just one second. Okay. Okay. And Monica, you should keep your speaker on if you if you don't mind, please, so I, so we can talk. Sure. Do you see it? Yes, I can see it now. Mm -hmm. I'm also you'll have to forgive me too. I'm a bit a bit of a deficit tonight. That I'm I normally have assistance when I present. Um, we just had a COVID maybe incident where a staff member was unknowingly exposed to someone who uh, later found out they had it. So my staff had to scatter in the last couple of days. So I'm here by myself. So um, you see, this is our, our cover. You can go into the next page, Monica. We did a lot of, we did a lot of study of the existing facility. We did a lot of mapping out on-site measuring CAD, CAD drawings. These are all very accurate models that we have. Um, you see what you currently have, your existing facility, you have the four bodies of water, the all competition pool, uh, the, the competition and dual use pool, then you have an intermediate pool, and then more of a, a, a waiting pool. Currently, your, currently your, um, your facility, the waiting pool will handle 96 users, the intermediate pool 225, the 50 meter 200, uh, I'm sorry, 662, the lap pool 515 for a total of 1,498 users. One of the problems you have, um, you don't really have a, a cohesive kind of plan that's 
the, the pools were built in my, in our opinion, as we study them a little bit in a little bit of a somewhat of a chaotic fashion over time where, where you don't have, um, you know, s s swimming facilities, you have groups of users, you have children, you have parents with children, uh, grandparents with grandchildren, you have the, the tweens and the teens, and then the adults and the seniors, they all have, um, they will all cross use different amenities, but they all have preferences and, and, and features and layouts that are more amenable to each group. So what we tried to do was think of that and, and how to reimagine the complex, make it more useful, make it more ADA uh, accessible. Right now, uh, none of the bodies of water are, are really accessible on their own. Um, so we took all that into account. We also wanted to um, uh, keep this um, because of the size of your complex and how many people use it. We also were concerned uh, of if, if you if you have growth, having enough enough usage area for people. So you'll see as we progress into the concepts that we had expanded your your user load capacity a little bit. But we also tried to reuse as much of the complex as you as we can so that it's doesn't break the bank um, to reimagine something like this, this size is inherently, inherently expensive, but we uh, were able to use quite a bit and, and, and cut that back uh, by quite a bit. So if you want to move on to the, to the next, please. Um, we did as, as we go through and as, if you look in, does it, Monica, did everyone have um, printed out versions of these by chance? They did have email versions. <laughs> Okay, because yeah. you can follow along and study them more closely after this meeting and, and any questions. And, and we can also send, um, we had at the, at the uh, in-person presentation, we had uh, large printed out versions that are much easier to see. We can resend those and so on to, to anyone who needs them. But we did color palettes, um, try to keep it tasteful yet, yet bright. Uh, Beauty, of course, is in the, the eye of the beholder. So all of this is, is subject uh, to, to change if desired. But we, we have a palette as we go through it. Okay, if you want to move to the next. What we did is we, we broke this into uh, zones of, of use. You see the, the yellow in the bottom left corner. Um, those are strictly mostly competition areas. Your your pool on the left, your competition pool. Um, then you have the the competition and diving on the right. Um, we're we're going to change the upper end of the the L shaped pool into a more intermediate play area, which you'll see soon, and use area. Then we converted this the blue areas now will be a waiting zone, and then we have a a uh, an adult zone closer to the facilities up above and closer to the um, concession area. So we, we're reshuffling things a little bit, as you'll see when we get to the next one, if you want to move on. Okay, if you start at the, if you look down the left of the screen, you'll see, and I won't read through all these for each one, again, in the interest of, of not, um, killing everyone time-wise, but I'll go through this one in a little bit of detail. You have, um, if you start on the top right corner, you have the uh, separate adult pool now. And it's an elevated area for amenities for adult patrons. It's separated by a landscaping wall. This is to give, this is not meant to really be a children inclusive. This is for seniors, adults, as, a, as an area away, but it is elevated um, above the rest. We chose that location so that you have better visibility down below. Um, hopefully if you're there with your children, you're, you're watching your children, but it's, it's, it's also elevated that you can see into the other areas uh, as well. We kept it closer to the main bathrooms, closer to the concessions in, in keeping that in mind of, of seniors and also from the main entry area is why we located it there. Um, it's ADA accessible entry into three foot, six inches of water. You can see down the right hand side, there's a ramp 
an ADA ramp and there's also ADA stairs in the center. So you, if you don't need the ramp, you can walk down the stairs. Uh, there's, there's shade sails uh, on the corners. Monica, I don't know if you have your pointer there. Um, if you can point to the kind of black triangles, there you go. Those are, those are shade sails and you have a, a lounge shelf in the water. Those are reclining or upright uh, chairs. It'd be at the other end. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Those chairs, those are, those are lounges and lounge chairs in the water. They're in nine inches of water. So you can recline and relax in the water. You'll see throughout, we have a lot of shade around. Um, you'll see areas of shade on the deck. Uh, you can, you can actually, of course, have people leave if it's too hot at a pool. Uh, so we have a lot of shade to, to recline to. There's, there's deck sprays for water movement in that area. The sound is soothing and, and they're, they're entertaining, but there's no, no toy features in that pool. Again, it's an adult area. So now if you move to the left, to the, the new wading pool, that's a, uh, it's a large tiled beach entry, which would be the gray, the gray area at the bottom. I'm not seeing your, there you go. That's a, that is a beach entry. You walk down from deck level, uh, beach entry. There are splash pad type features at the entry to that pool, uh, which are still in that gray area. There is a slide, a tot slide. Um, as you go down, there is, uh, in water benches. Yes. And there is a, there's shade sails over that pool. And that is so right where you are now. That is the, um, that is the in water benches. And then at the end of the pool where the little red squares are, that's in water seating that is upright for caregivers to sit. So caregivers can all sit on the bench or sit on the, sit on the chairs you have shade over the pool. You have a lot of play features right to the, at the, at the lower left corner of the pool. If you just slide down a little bit, there's a family right there. There's a family slide uh, that you can slide down where you can parents, grandparents can hold toddlers slide down the slide into the water and so on. So that's a maximum of, of one foot uh, six inches. Now, if you move to your left again to the next pool, to the intermediate pool addition. What we did there is we kept, we kept the basic footprint of your, your existing L-shaped pool and we put an addition on the end of it. Uh, up at the very top end of the pool, you'll see the, you'll see the gray area is, is beach entry. You would walk down beach entry. This is kind of a tween teen area. Um, you're walking down beach entry into about three foot, three foot, six inches of water now. So you have, you have uh, features in the pool that are, are tall sprays that are uh, geared towards that age group. You also have a handicap ramp down the side, which are the red rails just below where you are there. Yes. So you have handicap beach entrance and handicap with rail entrance. Um, that is an addition to the pool. Then you see the peninsula in between, which is the little red area right below your, your crosshairs. Yes. That is where your old pool ends now. Uh, you see the steps there. Now, if you move down to screen just a little bit, there's floatables in there. And your, if you have, happen to have the um, feature pages up on your computers at home or, or printed, well, we can move on to these later. They're, they show them in more detail, but those are floatable features that you, you climb on. There's sharks and lobsters and they're very large. You climb up on them, they float in the water. They're tethered to the floor with stainless steel chains and they're very popular. Um, one of the problems now that you have with the pool now is where, you, where your large slides enter. You can't do um, too much. Did, you, did that turn blue on, on purpose? There we go. And so what we did was we took your one large slide away and we moved it off into its own spill zone. Can you see that just to the left there? Yeah. Where, where your large slide now enters into the water, you're not able to use that area so much because of, of the slide entry. So this is a slide now that is just as large, but it enters into its own uh, tub of water 
on the deck. Some of you may have seen these. It has its own, its own discharge point. Right next to it, though, then we have another slide, a 23-foot wide slide, which is just above the slide, the other green slide that enters in, but it gives you more, it gives you more room. Um, you have still have four long lap lanes. And if you move down to the center of the pool, you see the green going across. That's a water walk. Um, it's, it's netting across the pool and you try to walk across uh, features that can be moved if you're doing, if you're doing competitions or it can be an optional feature. And you'll see pictures of that later. Then you have your competition area basically undisturbed. But I forgot to mention next to the water walk is um, we added two more sets of stairs to the pool. So you're really reusing that whole structure. I'll back up in the first two pools, the adult pool and the waiting pool. Those are, those are brand new pools. The, the ones that you have aren't really convertible. And if you tried to convert them into uh, beach entry and so on, there's too many deficiencies with them that it, it, it wouldn't pay. You're better off to just, just start over. Now, when you go over to your um, competition pool, the existing, uh, we've added 25-yard um, lanes now in the opposite direction, so backstroke flags. We've changed where your bleachers and seating are. And you'll see you have a lot of seating around the area of all the pools. And in between all the areas you have handicap access, we've had to recontour a little bit on the site plans. On the site considerations, we have a, a concession extension and pergola. We added some cafe seating, a retaining wall and landscaping. Um, addition of a second pavilion. Um, we, we've placed an entry down into the complex for food trucks, if that was ever desired. And um, a uh, secondary small concession storage down near the uh, lower filter building. So now you have, you have the pools really in, in um, much more, much more to do for each age group and a, and a better utilization of the space. And if you, um, can you move the screen up a little bit, Monica? Now we've increased your user load to 1,983 patrons from 1,498. So almost, almost 500, almost 500 patrons. and much more to do. Now, if you wanna to go to um, cost projection, if you did everything there, you're at about 2.5 to 3 million for all the changes. Uh, it could be done in phases potentially, which is for planning purposes, of course, often desired, but um, there's no doubt that two and a half to $3 million is a lot of money, especially, especially now, but you're getting a whole lot of uh, bang for your buck. And you actually have a, you have a, a, a very large complex, very nice complex, but very large. Okay. If you want to go to concept two, oh yeah, let's stop there. There you can see the changes. The, the kind of peach or pinky areas are what is what is new. So you can see what was added onto the L-shaped pool at the upper end, that new addition, the stairs that have been added. You can see in the middle of the screen, the little miniature L, that is the new children's pool, pretty close to where your, your two to uh, four foot pool is now or, or over top of it. And then you have, you see where the adult pool is placed. So we're staying pretty much inside of a, you know, we're staying inside the perimeter that you have, but we're just reallocating what is used and how it's used. And you can see you're retaining uh, quite a bit of your infrastructure. Okay, now if you wanna move on. Concepts two through four, 
are variations um, of the same. If you look over on the right, it, it's a different style, a different layout of the pool, of the adult pool. You're coming in from a different angle. You have instead of steps to walk down, you have a beach entry and a ramp instead of uh, steps and a ramp. You have more lounge uh, seating somewhat. If you go over to the to the to the waiting pool next to it, the lazy L there, that is again a beach entry, uh, zero entry to one foot six pool. The main difference is at the end of it, which is at the top of it now, the gray shaded area that is a uh, a larger splash pad area. When you look over to the main pool, uh, largely the same, except we took we left your we left your slides in place. Um, we left them where they were and we got, we, we moved some of the features around that would save you, for, you know, leaving your, leaving your two slides would save you 250 to $400,000. So some of these things are, are what was thrown out there to be hashed around. Now I want to mention this when you see, as we go to concepts three and four, if you look at all the different, the four different adult pools, or if you look at then the four different wading pools or the four different L-shaped main pools, you could have either one for either concept. So for example, if you like the, if you like concept one, the best, but you like the adult pool layout that's in concept two, you could put the adult pool concept two into concept one, if that makes sense to you. So the pieces are, the pieces are interchangeable. Um, overall, in our in-house, we, we liked concept one's layout the best. That's why we usually label it number one. But this is, as a decision makers, that's, that's for you folks to decide. Um, let's, let's move on and we can just come back with, with questions then, Monica. There you see again um, what was what is new in the in the pinky areas. Okay, move on to number three. Um, number three, just just different layout changes. Um, not too much to discuss in these. It's it's just a different different layout of of each one just a different style if someone has a, a preference. The features and so on don't change radically here, except that we got rid of your, we got rid of your large slide altogether on the main pool. And now you only have, you have the, the, the wider 23 foot wide slide, which you'll see in a minute. So let's breeze through this one. We'll go to, um, go to the over overview. Now, if you go to number four, um, you'll, the main difference here is on your L-shaped pool, your large main pool, we don't have the addition, but the blue box above it is a, a wave pool. It's a, it's a separate wave rider pool where you ride a surfboard. That, um, that, uh, that feature alone is a million dollars. So that may be a, a no right off the bat, but we were charged with showing you all the different options and um, they're pretty cool, but they're extremely pricey. Um, you'll see that in a second. So if you want to, if you want to move on a little, a little bit, there's a, the different color palettes that we selected. Again, this is subject to change. Um, you, you see the types of, sh of shade sails that the top one, the shade kite, those are throughout the complex. If you look on your concepts, there's, they're all over the place. They can be added uh, all at once or one at a time, but we wanted to give you more shade than you currently have. Then you see the types below the, the shade sails. Those are the types of sails that you would have over seating areas and, and, and bench areas. And I'll mention too, that the, um, the seating areas 
where you sit on lounges in the water, those are optional as well. The, the bodies of water can just be left bare and those can be taken out, but they're very popular. Some of these are res resort style features that we place in community complexes and we haven't had um, issues to date. Um, we've, we haven't had problems with um, people fighting over seats or that type of thing. It's been very well received and, and, and very civil, but it gives you a very calming atmosphere. And it's, it's uh, you can go there and spend a, a long time there and have many things to do for everyone is the idea behind all of these changes. Okay, if you wanna to go to the next. There on the left, you can see the typical beach entry. Um, also on the, on the top right is a beach entry. They're typically tiled um, and you have water features in them. You'll also see uh, the types of handrails that you would have, for example, on your L-shaped main pool, the handrails that you would walk down in from zero to three foot, uh, you would walk down through those types of handrails on the left and then down a beach entry on the right. Uh, anywhere you need, for example, in that pool where you have a, a peninsula divider, the, uh, you see that on the, on the bottom right, the type of separating walls and they're, they're a decorative uh, uh, fence they're made to get wet, they're, they're made out of stainless steel. Okay, next. These are the types of chairs on the left you're talking about. Um, in the wading pool, they would sit more upright than recline. In your, in your adult pool, it's more typical to have these reclining. They're much closer together, not much closer together, but they're closer together than is in the top picture. They're more similar to the bottom. Um, they're plastic PVC. They're filled with sand. And uh, again, in your wading pool, they sit more upright so that you are watching the children better. Okay, next. Here's some of the types of features uh, in your wading pool concepts on the bottom left. Uh, is, a, is a family type slide. You also have a uh, submariner, submarine themed slide in the wading pool concepts. You see the different spray features and toys. The, uh, on my screen, the, the attendee bar is covering the, the, the one on the far right, but they're, they're soft skinned features. Yes, they're, they're soft skinned and they spray. Um, they're very tough vinyl, but they're soft. Uh, they're, they're hard to damage. So in all, the, in all the children's areas, you have a lot of these types of bubblers and sprays. And again, in the, uh, uh, the teen areas, you have taller features that are more suitable. Do you wanna move on, please? There you can see some of the taller features. Um, kind of center, bottom, the, the slide with the water, that's, that's the wide slide that's in your concepts. You can go down with kids or a couple of adults can go at the same time. Or if, if, if you like, then the guards can regulate the one person at a time that goes by. But that's a different type of slide. Uh, then on the bottom, you see the large green slide. That's where it's talking where it has its own run out and, and doesn't take up so much space in the pool. That's the type of slide that would be just on your deck. In, in all your main pool concepts, your L-shaped pools, you have the themed floatables. There you can see the lobster, which is one that I believe you have in your pool. Yeah, you do. And it is a, um, they're tethered again to the, to the floor by a stainless steel chain. They have a stainless steel skeleton underneath them, but they float. There's somewhat of a challenge to get on depending which um, one, it's half the fun is trying to get on it and stay on it. Uh, you can ride them and there you see everyone, you know, made it up on, but it's not always so easy to make it up on because they, they bounce around and they're, they're wildly popular. Okay. Uh, there on the left, you see the water walk, which was in your main pool. That is, that is a removable feature. And then on the bottom right, you see a climbing wall 
which is why I usually have an assistant because I think I forgot to mention that that was an option in your, in your larger pool and your, your diving as well, which you, you would keep your diving. Okay. This is that optional um, wave rider pool. You can see the size and the scope, but, um, but very, but very expensive. And that's, that's its own standalone, that's its own standalone pool. Okay. Um, then we consider concession expansion. Your concession stand is, I think the nicest one I've ever been to at a public pool. And uh, we tried to make some modifications here to give them a little more room and a little more space and a, perhaps a better flow in their, in their, in their work environment. Not to mention that you have now an increase, an increase in your, in your user lens. Okay. These are different site considerations. You could have a, a, a pergola type structure over part of your cafe area, cafe area next to your dining now. You see where from the right of the screen where it points to a uh, type that you could place over there. And then in between these areas, you have, uh, you have the option for planters and, and plants and grasses. If that's not desired, you can just have retaining walls. Don't forget, you have a lot of changes in elevation there. So we have to do something to border them, whether it's just a plain wall or, or something of this nature. Okay. All right. Well, I covered that um, way faster than in person. And um, I, I have as much time as you folks do for any questions. So I'll open the floor for the park board. If you guys want to turn on your cameras and Mike, you can take the lead. Okay, one second. I just need to move the grade. And just to make note, Kim Rock joined the meeting during the presentation for Janelle. Um. All right, so uh, I'm just going to I'll open up to public comment from Park and Rec. I'm just going to go in order of the screen. So I'm going to start with Mike Blundy. All right, so, uh, so I, I guess I uh, love the shade. You know, I think that uh, the shade is really needed at the pool. Um, so I'm glad to see that's being addressed. The intermediate pool looks to be smaller than the pool that we have now. And the intermediate pool, in my opinion, is like a heavily used pool for little kids and parents. So, I, I, you know, I think that, I mean, I don't know. It doesn't, doesn't say what the dimensions are. Um, but yeah, I, for this meeting, I don't have, I don't have available all the, all the uh, square footages, which I did in the last one, but I can get back to you on that. But it is, they may not be as small as, as you think, because don't forget, we're increasing your user load by, by quite a bit. Well, that would make it even smaller, right? Because what you're saying is you're going to have more people, but the pool, that intermediate pool, which is, well, maybe I'm not thinking about this the right way. Is that? Well, to have more people, you need more water space. So, well, to, you know, so that intermediate pool is like two to four feet. Yeah. Monica, what is the size of the pool now? Does it go you, from like two to four feet? You can go back to the overlay may help give some perspective, Monica, to number at number one. Oh, number one. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, you're right, Mike. The Blondie, the um, the it is, I believe, two to four feet. And um, I know that was a concern of the public, too when we had our open public meeting. And one of the things, and then what we pointed out, and again, I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not saying we can or won't uh, change anything. I just want to point out that it's, it's always easy to get, to, to get focused on how it was used previously and, and um, not fully maybe see how it would be used now. We're, we're breaking, you know, you had a concentration of people in that pool before, and now the idea is that we're, we're breaking those people up. So if you look at the, just go to the overlay, Monica, 
you know, if we took the square footage of that um, and condensed it, it, it may be a hair smaller. I'd have to, I'd have to look back on those notes, but it's, it's not all for the same crowd. This is, you're, you're breaking up, um, you're taking away from these pools and redistributing people. So give me the ages of, of each area that you expect the, the user to be. Well, the adult pool you're, you're, is, is really for, for 30 on up. Right. Okay. The children's pool is for children up to age uh, approximately eight. So but, then, but then all of their caregivers as well. So right now, the pool that we have is up, up to age five, the kiddie pool. Is that, um, Monica, is that what we do? Yeah, we have a tendency of tracking up to around age five. It just depends on um, siblings. A lot of the five-year-olds want to be with the bigger kids. <laughs> so then they end up going over to the other pool. Right. And, and the depth of the, I'll say kiddie pool, is one feet six inches yes and and it, i think that's what we have now is that about that right yes yes so and you know from my experience like that's never really full that that uh kitty pool um in terms of you know people using it uh, it depends on the time of day. There are times where it's really full. Yeah, and you were very amenity light in those pools too. Yeah, no, that uh, I I I agree with you there. I agree with you there. I I just think that you know my experience is with that intermediate pool. That's you know the like the younger kids who want to go with their older siblings and uh, parents that want to watch their kids who aren't quite comfortable in the, in the water yet, like that gets the crowdest um, from my, you know, that's how it used to be when I would go there with my kids. And I think that needs to be bigger rather than smaller. And especially if you're saying that this is going to attract more people, um, are you saying to make, make it, it more congested if if there's not enough you know space? Are you saying making the waiting pool the That's new waiting pool? Not the waiting pool. That that yes, the one that, that area the there. Pool. Okay. Yeah, and keep in mind too with that, and that's easy to do. Um, keep in mind with that area then too, with it now being beach entry and having that varying depth in that pool, you have a you have a you have a graduated depth to play in, so more people are going to use use that. Well, but it, it's, it's very easy to enlarge that area. You know, Mike. Another thing to consider too, if if the board decides that the the slides, because they do, I can tell you, take up a lot of the room. So this, so this is a lot of play area that's missing. So you take these slides and you move them over here, you also gain back all of this play area that you lose now with the slides. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that that area, you want that, you want that pool to be the same size because it's, uh, it's um, like competition length, I think it's 75 yards or 75 meters. Um, I don't know the dimensions, but I, I remember, uh, you know, folks had, had were insisting that that should stay the way it is um, because of when they have competitions, it's like one of the few pools that is as large as it is. Um, so I, I, I wouldn't want to, take space from there to add to the intermediate pool. Could we add here? Brent? Yes. Yes, very, yes, that would be very easy to do. You could just widen it. Yeah, 
Well, there might now, be. Keep, uh, I, I, I want to point something out in case you didn't see it. You see right now when you're looking at that pool, you have six lanes, okay? Yeah. The long lanes. Go back, please, Monica, one to the, to the concept. By, uh, by putting that, um, that neck in there, you open up that end a little bit. Now you have, you have four lanes. That, that was discussed in the last meeting or when we were surveying that it was believed that that was adequate, but you may have a different opinion of that. Well, I, I, I'm not familiar with all the competition that goes on it, on with it, but couldn't they like line that with uh, rope if there was a competition in it to, uh, you know, add more lanes? Or Mike, do you need the do you need the striping on the the bottom to? Right now, no, we don't compete at that length. There's no competition. It's more for training. So they'll okay. swim the full length uh, for training, but there's no competition that runs that way. Okay. So then maybe it's not important that, you know, maybe we could take space from that pool then. I wouldn't take the length away, but... Um, because I think that you will, they do train <laughs> that length yeah. and, and you might, we might end up, you know, hurting that whole pe group of people that, that well, likes know, to swim the length. The group of people that were concerned about that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that if anything, um, based on the feedback at the last, if there were to be, if the board felt this way um, to extend out this way versus taking away the length of this here. And as you take away that length, it costs more to do that than it does just to add on it. Mm -hmm. So we, we weighed those things as well. Well, there, I mean, they're, they're my comments, uh, you know, but I love the shade. I, um, I like the features that uh, you're proposing for the water, the, uh, the walkway across um the lobster and the uh you know the other floatables uh, i i think they're terrific um thank you so. right now that sized addition on that pool is estimated at about at about 550 uh thousand so the larger you go you just you just keep increasing that number but that's fine it's um that is an area that, um, you know, like you said, it was used. That's, that's a, a popular area. As much of that as you can afford, it would certainly be used. Uh, Monica, how does this impact, uh, um, like, the amount of lifeguards that we have? We have more lifeguards under this scenario or less lifeguards? We would need more lifeguards. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. More lifeguards on duty. And it, it, well, and I would normally be able to tell you what that number is because we have that. Unfortunately, again, I'm well, we're I'm, looking at, I'm at a deficit here that I don't have all my <laughs> all my help with me today. But I can give you what that increase in numbers is. I can tell you off the bat. It's about one, two, three, four. I'm seeing at least four more lifeguards on stand at any given time at, at a minimum. And there's a couple little blind spots here that we might need guards there too. And do the, the water features, do they need a, a lifeguard? They wouldn't need a lifeguard per water feature. They would, he would have a guard here and a guard here. That, that would be seeing, be viewing that area. And even this guard down here will look to scan that area too. Mm -hmm. the, this is an additional guard. We usually have one guard at the baby pool now, but you would need, because of the features, you need a second guard there. So I'm seeing approximately four. So the, the, other, uh, the other thing you said is that this could be done in stages. Like it, 
you know, how would that work? Well, for example, your 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 all competition pool on the left, that's minor changes. That's easy to do. Your the pool we were just talking about, you could add that, you could add that um that addition on um and make the changes to that pool. The other two pools then um if you go can you go one more page please monica to the overlay there you see um you know we we kind of kept them you, you, the children's pool and the adult pool are, are in the same basic areas you could probably do those one at a time we'd have to look at exactly what you would do with the landscaping around it and the division around it um they could they could probably be worked out to be done one at a time, but those two it might be easier to to do both at the same time because you're kind of resculpting the uh, the areas around them as well. And so the the pool would be able to function over this summer, and then the work would be done in the fall and the spring. Yeah, if you wanted to do all of this at once, um, it's it's possible, but it's a. I mean, the reality of it is, is it's so much at once that um, you know, you you always risk on a job like this, depending on, on what kind of season, what kind of weather, what kind of winter you have that you you, you start getting into the season before it or, or season after it. Um, it. It's not, it's not inconceivable to do it all at once, but it's, it's pushing it in that time span. It would, it would make me, it would make me sweat a little bit for you. What is the duration of the construct? If you did the whole thing? Well, I mean, you, you need a, you need a full nine months and just depending on what kind of, of winter you have, because of course you're never under roof. It's, it's, um, it can, it can get, it can get tenuous. You'd have to, you'd have to make sure that, um, you know, in this, in this part of the world, um, aquatics contractors are not, um, overly large companies, you might even have to tailor your contract. You'd have to make sure that whoever would take it on, that you might have more than one company joining forces where you would work it all in one. It's possible to do it all in one. It's a strained, it would be a strained endeavor to do it all at one time, but it is possible. Well, Mike, I don't have anything else. Okay. Uh, Dennis. Yeah. Um, sure. Thanks, Mike. Uh, thanks, Brody. Well, just building on what Mike was saying, I, the thing that kind of stood out to me that was a bit of a surprise was this allocation of space to a senior pool um, or an adult pool, whatever you want to call it up on the right side. It doesn't look like a swimming pool. It's just like, it looks like a, I don't know, waiting area. Well, it goes from it goes from zero to three and a half feet. Right. So um, it still seems a bit like an oddball to me in terms of tank usage. And um, did we did we arrive at that based on some sort of um, survey responses? Was there enough of a population saying they wanted a dedicated adult pool or adult well, waiting area or whatever you want to call it? I, that that as well and monica can talk more about this but what what was conveyed to us is is how many seniors now you have congregate in kind of an area down by your your competition pool now um in an attempt to get away um from everybody and um and there was a lot of a lot of feedback in the meeting that um they wanted to keep their own segregated space so this is this is to give that population that that space. So, so is, is this truly the only only is this only the only truly segregated space in the property? Because it sounds like even though there's things designated as kiddie pools, anybody can go in them. And the young youngsters, like you said, Monica, tend to follow the older kids to the bigger pool. So, 
Is this ending up being the only segregated, truly segregated area in the property? It is, it is designed more for, or, or 90, yes, basically that's the case. It's designed really for that, um, that adult through senior area as a, as a segregated area. Yes. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm all for like uh, finding ways to, you know, make it attractive for them. But to me, that seems like it'd be a waste of, 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 of opportunity given the time of day. Like, for example, I don't know their habits, but if the seniors are early risers and get there at the crack of dawn and spend a couple hours, but then bail out for the rest of the day when it gets too hot, that pool would be sitting there unused because it's restricted to adults. Uh, or well, largely unused because the biggest part of the population is not there. So. Well, what we were what we were told now is that you have that going on kind of as an impromptu occurrence anyway down in those other areas and and um, taking up areas where normally you would have you would have play and so on. So we're kind of dislodging them in this plan and this gives them a new place to to congregate so then i could tell you kind of where this stems from there's a whole group of people who ha like say after their kids age out and kind of can play on their own that like to hang out here and i get you know we get a lot of complaints about you know so and so like a football hit me <laughs> i'm trying to relax I'm trying to do my work. I come here for the Wi-Fi and I hang out by the side of the pool. Um, there's a whole group of people, population of people at our pool that do um, like to just sit in the shade. Generally, they sit here um, right next when you're, to me. When you're doing that, Monica, I don't, you're saying here. Are you pointing to something? Because I don't see anything moving on my phone. Oh, it, um, yeah. I don't know. Between. Yeah, there you see. <laughs> so do you see it now? Yeah. So they hang out right here next to the slide and generally they're, you know, there's kids playing or whatever and, you know, running over them or whatever is happening. Um, but they're trying to have like their peace adult time. So this would give them that space. Um, I don't want to, I, 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 I don't want to solve the problem now because I don't have enough knowledge of it, but if that were the case, if it was valuable play space, then why, why couldn't we just dedicate I'm thinking of the current layout we have right now. And I'm not saying we, we keep it, but I'm just saying, you wanted to move the the adults that are looking for some peace and quiet to a different area, make the area they're hanging out in, which turns out to be not that area, not a good area for them to switch them to a different area, like make that a dedicated play area and put them up on the hill or something that, you know, avoids them from getting hit by football. But I'm just, well, that seems like that's, that's what, what you, I hear what you're saying. What, what you said is what we were trying to do, put them up on the hill in an area where they won't get hit by the football. That was, that was our attempt at solving that. No, no, I, can I, be. I, I get it. It's a solution. Um, it, it may work and it might be the perfect solution for all I know, but it just seems like that would be a somewhat um, lower utilized area, unfortunately, lower utilized area, if that were the case, because um, the, the senior population probably is not as um, uh, populate, populous in our membership and um, and stay as long but I, 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 don't so know. I don't know I don't know that that's necessarily the case I yeah, don't know that fine. the focus is I, I said, seniors I, 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 yeah I'm thinking like like Monica said you know if I have kids in high school that's where I'm going because if my kids are old enough to be on their own I don't want to be around kids and I'm thinking about like friends I have that are you know chose not to have kids they don't want to be around people's kids they're in their you know 30s and 40s but so I don't, I don't know that it's just senior. I feel like there would probably be a good amount of people using that. Right. That's what I, it was intended really, you know, there, there, there's not a, a, you folks would make up the rules, but it's, it's kind of for a thirties on, on up group where you want that more relaxed atmosphere. And the, um, back to the, the point, I think, I don't know if Mike was going down this originally, but, Monica, the, the way this is structured now, is it um, designed around the, the uh, um, population of, of, or the makeup of our uh, typical membership? In other words, like we're trying to attract, uh, we're, we're, we're densifying pieces of this property here, di different parts of the pool usage. And is it 
done because it matches up with the a proportionate amount of our members? Uh, well, I can tell you, Brent had all of our numbers, all of our, you know, he, he came up with this design based on everything he knows. So we did, um, he has all of our numbers. Um, he has feedback we've had. He has a, a lot of things that went into this, but not to mention he also um, did interviews with key stakeholders, um, interviews with the staff. And, you know, so it, it really a lot of information went into this. So it's not just one thing, but um, yeah, you know, of course yeah, yeah. we, we are targeting towards a lot of people that are already attending the pool, um, yeah, yeah. and trying to make it appealing to more people. That yeah. look at Well, Monica said it was all the above and um, you know, you have such a used heavily used facility that um, some of the, some of these gains uh, just came naturally as we were, as we were, you know, improving how people can, uh, can use it. Some of these gains in some, of, don't forget to, um, I should mention this, something that factors into the user load count is the size of your deck and how you weighs into the numbers of the, uh, of the attendees. So the deck space is also a part of that. It's not all, um, net gains in water area. Yeah. Okay. Another another question that came to mind was we we're talking about the number of lanes in that pool. I heard the same thing Mike did, and then this could be just hearsay, but I thought that 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 fifty meter, I think it was mm -hmm. the pool there, was um, special in some ways, and um, probably best not to tamper with it, only because it was such a special thing in the area. There weren't many pools of that nature, and I I again recall hearing that that's where the lap people swim laps there and it seems like isn't there uh, like battles over space in the lap pool yeah, and, sure. um, and if we're going from six to four doesn't that create even a bigger issue there the issue is really in the lap pool okay. um, it, it's not necessarily over here not everybody wants to swim the 50 meters um if okay. we put those features in that we discussed today, you know, that we'd have to kind of set times for those laps because we'd have to remove them in order for people to swim um, the laps. Um, but, you know, that's all stuff to consider as we, you know, go through this process. Um, there was a lot of discussion. Brent can confirm this um, and Mike Brody can confirm this also about the direction. And I think Mike, Mike Blundy, were you at that meeting too? The original, I think he yes. was. Yes, I was. Um, about the, the direction of the lap lane and, and the model that Brent is suggesting is not just to have this way, it's just to provide that as an option um, if we wanted to go um, in the opposite direction. But there is, this is a heavy, um, heavily used um, space and a lot of it, um, it has to do with some programming too. We have to get creative with the way that we use that space also. And that, that pool was actually built to go both directions. The, the lines were just never put down. It's all this, all this infrastructure there for it. Okay, and then uh, may, maybe my last question, and for those of you that have been around long enough, don't laugh at this, but uh, was there any consideration giving to making one of the larger pools uh, winterized, like with a bubble or something, to allow some of the teams to work in the, in the winter? That I don't think was raised at all. Um, I don't think that question was raised. Okay. I just someone brought it to the board years ago, um, and uh, we kind of laughed at it. But he had the idea for funding. I thought, you know, if we're if we're redoing the area to like make it attractive to a broader number of users, um, the, the, no, none of the sports are just seasonal anymore, right? There, Football is year round, soccer is year round, baseball is year round, and swimming is year round. So, I, I know there's indoor places to go, but if we have a facility and it's a feasible thing to do, um, maybe it is worth considering. Well, there's there certainly are. Um, how do I want to say this? I mean, the, the the two main types of complexes are are all outdoor, like you have, or if you have an indoor then it, it, it's more of a community type center 
pool. Um, there are, of course, pools. I don't know where the closest one to you would be. Like if you have a competition pool all by itself under a bubble like that, it's, um, and then you would leave that bubble over it all, all year then. No, I was just thinking because like, the, the way they do some of these are, they're those inflatable domes. Yeah. You just pump some pressure into it and, um, they, I would say in the summer, you'd take it down and expose it to the air, but it would just be done for the months where the water would be at risk of freezing and it'd be too cold to actually use. So. Yeah. All that's possible. Um, the cost of those is, is very high, but it could be looked into if that's something that you were interested in. Well, there's not many opportunities to consider something like that or something like a wave pool, which I thought was pretty cool. And I, I know it's a million bucks, but if, uh, it would probably be a pretty attractive feature. Yeah. That wave pool could be added somewhere else in addition to all these things, for example. But, um, yeah. you know, when we met with the, when I did some of the uh, interviews, um, uh, some of the, some of the, the folks in charge, rightfully so, you know, were concerned about the, um, the cost and, and et cetera. So we tried to, um, yeah, you know, yeah I, I, keep it I, in. I, yeah. I get it on that one, that one too. Right. If you get, if you got surfboards in there, you probably have a very small number of people that could be in there at one time. So yeah. you got a whole tank dedicated to a person or two at, at a time. And as cool as it would be, it probably doesn't make any sense economically, but yeah, that's all I have. Mr. Brody. Uh, thanks Dennis. Uh, next on the screen, uh, David Malinowski. Given the um, lack of money that we've had since Terry left, what's the, how practical is it that we do any of this in the near future? Even I can answer that question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> even less practical now after COVID-19. Uh, right now. Um, yes, you know, I, <laughs> yeah, so um, it's not probably going to happen in the next few couple years even. Um, but we do have to, if we want to, and if money does become available or say a grant opportunity does become available um, by having this plan in place and it has been discussed um, at a community level and with, by the boards and heavily vetted, um, it would be easy for us to go ahead and submit a grant fast um, and get approved for it. If we don't have something like this in our pocket, then it'd be harder for us to move forward with any kind of planning. And even if it's a phase, like say, we'd like to really tackle a certain section or a certain piece, um, you know, it would be so much easier for us to do that if we have this in our pocket. So may as well continue to finish up what we were doing, um, get this, you know, set for us and ready to go um, for when we can do things. Yeah, I love it. There's so many great things in here and there's so much that that we could do. And, and I'm not really a pool person. I think we belonged a couple of years and the kids went way more than I did. I didn't realize that adults are supposed to bring adult beverages and hide them um, when they go with the kids at the time. I didn't learn that until way after. So that's one of the reasons I didn't go. But but I, I think it's I mean, it's a huge thing for the community. And and these improvements would be I, I could see it attracting just a ton of people to come and, and experience it, too. But uh, like you said, first, we've got to get. First, we've got to reopen the economy. <clears throat> then we've got to reopen the pool. And, and then we can go from there. But I, I, I love it, basically. Is that everything, Dave? You can move on, my friend. Thank you. Uh, Kim? All right. So I took some notes here while I was driving, which is very safe to do. Um, so I love the I love the sails for shade. I think that's great. I love the in water seating. I love the baby slide. I love the food truck access, the bucket sprays, the rope walk. Um, I like the adult area. Like I said before, I don't think it's just for seniors. I think that's great for people who maybe. I, I mean, I know that I have some adult friends that avoid the pool because they don't want to be around kids. Um, so that's a great space for them to go. My questions or negatives, um, 
I feel like the flow rider thing is probably an expensive waste of space that could be better utilized for something that everyone could use instead of just a couple people at once. Um, this, and, uh, are, you, are you talking about the surf pool? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I also have concerns about the climbing wall. Um, as a parent, I feel like that's just screaming kids falling on top of each other in the water, which doesn't seem safe to me. So I didn't know, is that going to be regulated? Like how many people can climb at once or can one person be climbing on top of someone else? And no, it's meant for one at a time or depending okay. on how wide it is, because we put this in, in concept form. You can, you can get them in different widths. If you have a very wide one, then you could have one of person at each end, for example, but you have a guard near, nearby okay. that regulates that. Yeah. That was my concern. If no one's really watching and there's like five kids at once, that just seemed scary to me. And all um, these, all these features are deletable. So if there's something that you don't like at all, it can be removed. I mean, I think it's a cool option and it really doesn't seem like it's one of those, like going to take up a lot of space in lieu of something else. Cause it's just a vertical thing attached to the end of the pool. So mm -hmm why not? Um, as long as someone is regulating how many people are on it at once. And they, they lean over the water. So you don't fall straight down. You've, you've they're, you, they, they yeah. lean slightly over the water. You fall into the water. That's good. Um, that's pretty much all I've got. And then I had two random questions, suggestions, whatever. Um, not that either of these are possible, but I'm just throwing it out there cause it would be fun. Um, any kind of like lazy river type of thing. I don't know if that's ever a possibility, but I've been to a couple pools that have that. And that's, that seems like a nice option, but probably can't fit into this plan. And then I was just curious and I'm assuming I know the answer to this, but along with the adult area and the food trucks and things like that, I'm assuming we're never going to have an option for alcohol since we're a dry town to begin with. Um, but if we did eventually have some kind of alcohol option, I feel like limiting it to the adult area would make sense and be a nice attraction for the people who are in that adult area. Yeah. The alcohol thing is completely up to, to you guys as, as the owners, the, um, the lazy river we always consider, but we just, we just found it very hard to work into your site and um, and just make it work with everything you else else you had because again we were trying to reuse as much as we could to keep um, the cost down and I'm not just saying this because we designed it it's um there's there's no doubt that it's a lot of money but it's in a complex like this you're on you're on the low end cost of a overhaul. I mean, it's, it's a ton of money, but it's not a ton of money for something like this. You're actually on the, on the low side of, of cost for a facility like this. I mean, they, they just, they just cost a lot, but you're on, you're on the lower side of that. We, we worked very hard to reuse and use as much as of everything that we could. Oh, I also love the splash area for the little kids. I think that's something that a lot of people have been asking for for a long time. That's all I've got. Thanks, Kim. Um, so since I was at both, uh, I actually did a lot with this. So I was interviewed by Brent. Uh, originally before anything was presented um, as a member of the pool who had two young kids, I was interviewed for that. I then attended Brent's first presentation with citizens and now I'm on this one. So I guess what I'd like to start with was when I was at the meeting where he presented this to the citizens, uh, Monica completely undersold it. Um, at least an hour and a half to two hours was dedicated to the direction of the lap pool. Um, it was actually a very interesting conversation because um, there was many, many proponents for keeping the lap pool at 25 meters, that changing it to 25 yards would make people, uh, the extra turns uh, by the shorter distance would make people dizzy um, and all these issues. And we really listened. It, it, 
honestly, almost everybody there um, that raised the issue complained about that issue. Um, and then almost like the last person to speak, if I remember correctly, was like the high school coach who said that uh, U.S. high schools and colleges swim at 25 yards. So um, I found that very, so that was something that was quite interesting. So just keeping it real, you know, and, and it was probably only 25 to 30 people that were raising these complaints. Um, but, but that was definitely the big complaint that night. And it was interesting to know that our with wise perspective um, would be what high schools go at. Um, additionally, just because somebody had done the math, um, 25 yards is uh, roughly 90% of, uh, ninety percent of twenty-five meters, so it'd essentially be one extra lap every ten laps. Um, was the math that we had figured out that night. So I, I want to express that. Um, another big concern was for the floatables. I think everybody loved the idea of the floatables. The big concern was um, the movability, uh, the removability, and then re putting them back in. So that was always just, that was just a big consideration that like people like that idea, but there's going to be times where you don't want those in the pool. And we want to, and you know, there was just a lot of people asking the question, will those be easy to remove? Will they be easy to get back in? Um, so that was another consideration there. Um, uh, I agree. I kind of agreed with Kim in terms of what the, a lot of people kind of like the idea of the adult pool. Um, Dennis, I kind of agreed with you at first and then, but there were people who, who the, the predominantly people liked the plans as they were presented, liked number one. That's, that was the read that I got. Um, the other big complaint really was just, um, your typical, um, financing, how are we going to pay for this taxes? Should we be doing this? Like that, that general broad scope, uh, complaint that comes up when we discuss projects. Um, so in terms of, so I just wanted to kind of express my opinion of what had happened at, at the previous meeting. And, and I'm happy to see it a second time. Cause I feel like, look, I, I love the pool. We've had our, uh, my son's last three birthday parties there. I, I, I use it all the time. I even go to the concession stand when I'm not at the pool, just to get a hamburger. Um, so I kind of liked seeing this a second time post COVID to get a different perspective. Um, I'm curious, did we consider going smaller at all or did the numbers not at all support any aspect of going smaller? But I would think if we're doing like a comprehensive pool study, um, in retrospect, cause I never said this to you before, Brian, in retrospect, I kind of, sorry that we didn't consider, should we have, you know, gone smaller. So I guess I'm, I would be curious to know, uh, did, was there any consideration in terms of that? Well, every, every new component could be reduced in size. You, you, you don't always though, if it, for example, though, if you cut, take, if the screen we're looking at now, your, your waiting pool, for example, in the middle of the lazy L, if you cut that in, if you cut that in half in size, for example, you're not going to save half the dollars. Oh, I meant, I meant in terms of is the pool area. And, and I personally don't actually think it is, but is the pool area as a whole is five pools too big? Are, are we running too big of a pool? And, and, and is that something that should have been considered in this? If we're, if we're uh, looking at the comprehensive plan, I, the comprehensive plan, not just be about growth. Should it actually have contemplated? It, what, uh, what I, what I saw of your numbers and in talking to the staff and in seeing it in person, I don't think you can, I, I think you're, you're borderline small as you are. I don't think you can go, down in numbers. I don't think you have too big of a, a complex. I think you have a very successful complex. Um, you know, in, um, in my personal life, I'm on my town council and we deal with some of this stuff and, um, it's, it's, we deal with the same thing right now. It's, um, you know, money's money's not the best situation at the moment, but the the, the I, one day this will go away, um, hopefully sooner than later. And I think your I think your 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 usages aren't going to change, and the number of people that use it aren't going to change. And it may be harder because of the financial circumstances to carry through for a while to afford it. But I 
I don't think, I think you'd be making a mistake if you tried to, to downsize. I, I think when it returns to normal, whenever that is, you'll, you'll regret it. I, I don't think you would have enough then. I mean, I think your, your prosperity will one day return to this, possibly even this summer, depending on how things happen. And I, I never viewed that, that you had, there are some communities that we work with that, that for, for what they use and who they have and the population, it, it is too large. And we do recommend downsizing them. They never, I don't believe that's the case here. Cool. No, I appreciate that. I, you know, as I said, I, I would have been surprised if you said yes also, but I, I did want to ask the question. Um, the, what was the other? Oh, so just uh, kind of speaking back to what Mike Blundy brought up about the pools. Um, I think I do, I do feel that a pool that's going to cover, uh, I have full disclosure, I have a five-year-old and an eight-year-old. So um, I'm, I'm struggling with the issues of having a kid that really can't swim, a kid that can now and and i've grown through the progression of the lower makefield pools as two kids that couldn't swim and and watched how they progress moving through the pools um i think the concept of a pool that's going to have uh babies through eight um will be underutilized because uh as monica i think i think i think monica said it as soon as you can swim you're trying to get out of the as soon as you can really swim like really really swim and your parents aren't worrying about you drowning bluntly um you're trying to go out over to those bigger pools and and what i will say is if we remove those the slide overwash or whatever we call it the flow so that that's a play area it's still really deep so so like you know my son's seven he's about four feet four feet two inches and he can't stand in that area so although he can swim it, he can't go hang out there for any extended period of time because that area is still too deep. So I think if we're contemplating moving a, a, an area or contemplating making the slide runoff into more of a, a play area for more people, it has to be contemplated to make that part not so deep um, to, to reach a bigger audience. Um, because, because from the most practical perspective, even if you can swim, if you're not over four feet tall, then a pool that's four feet tall is going to be a problem just in, just in terms of depth. So are you talking about shallowing the, in this picture, yes. the, that, that new so or there? If we're talking about making that area, if we're talking about um, taking the center peach color, uh, you know what I'd call the, the, uh, uh, what do we call that middle pool, Monica? I'm sorry. The where we have the, the intermediate pool now. The intermediate pool. If we're talking about making the intermediate pool smaller, I, I think Mike is completely on point. I think you need more of an area for your four to eight year olds. So uh, why I say four to eight year olds, I'm thinking kids who can swim, but they don't have the vertical height to be well, able to stand in a deeper pool. Well, that area there now where she has the, the crosshairs, you could move um you know, you could change that depth pretty easy. And right now, right now it goes to um, from beach entry to about three foot, three, six, whatever the end of the main pool is. That could be shallowed. If you were talking, the other gentleman was talking about making that wider, uh, larger, which I thought was a good idea. And are you saying you would want more of a uh, an area, like you could make that new addition, like to um, two feet deep or, or, or different depth. Yeah, I would think that new area either you want beach entry it so you have a, a, a so you're not attracting smaller kids so that you're not enticing too small, I guess. Or I, I, I don't know. I guess I guess I'd say I'm just raising it now. We have time. You know, we have time to work on that intricate detail. I would imagine. I would imagine that for tonight. That, it, but I guess I'm just acknowledging what Mike is saying that I think that we, we'd ha that a huge, huge audience for us is up until 10, right? Up until kids are really gaining independence. It, it's a huge audience for the pool. It's a huge swimming basin. It's a huge people that come there every single day. And I would just want to be cognizant of the literal height of those kids and, and, and to ensure that we have enough pool space that's, that not only they can swim in because it's designated for them, but it's low enough uh, depth of water that they can stand. Hey, Mike Brody, they, they're called swimming pools for a reason. They're not standing pools. Gotcha. <laughs>
Well, widening widening that area, like was talked about, would definitely take care of half of your concern, and then Absolutely. that depth could be adjusted. Absolutely, absolutely. I was just raised. That was just you know something I had thought of. Um, and then keep in mind the fact that it's now beach entry. What beach entry does inherently is giving is give you give you a varying depth to play in. You you have because that beach entry is pretty long. Yeah. So you can, you can work your way to the depth that you like. Yeah. Um, but if you feel that that's too deep, for example, at the three, three, something that we had planned, then that could be shallowed. And then, then where that neck adjoins the existing pool, that, that pitch just changes there. Yeah, that makes sense. And then in, in concept one, why did I think that the um, picnic tables were over the X and complex? There, they were, there was two pavilions right here. Exactly. Right. Okay. And, and, and okay, cool. Uh, uh, we weren't, we were looking, I gotcha. Very good. Um, so yeah, as I said, I, um, I largely really liked the overall plan. I did ask the question about going smaller, but I think it's our, you know, responsibility to make sure we're looking at all sides of the picture not just what I like. Um, I did really like a lot of aspects of the plan. Brent, something you didn't talk about that I do remember we asked about and you did talk about um, a lot of what uh, I believe you were going to do is a lot more leveling. So whereas right now the intermediate pool down to the diving area is really sloped grass. Um, I think if I remember correctly, you talked about making that more concrete with like a wall down to like a, another level so that we, we try to. Yeah, like, and you, you can know. see that it's more, we got rid of the grass area and it's more deck space. And now you have, um, and now you have that retaining wall between the two. But it's and that plays into your user load also, and that's why I I, I should have pointed out earlier that that's the, the the gain in 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 user load isn't just related to water area. It's how you've increased the deck space as well. Um, so yeah. And the idea, don't forget too, with all this is that 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 you come and you 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 want to stay longer you know um there's something for everyone to do and there's space for everyone and there's shade for everyone and and i think you're gonna attract more people who are gonna want to hang out longer than they do now uh thanks brent monica that's uh that's it for parker rec unless anybody has one last chime in Nope, that's awesome. Okay, so um, Park and Rec, if you can mute your cameras and Disability Advisory Board, if you could bring your cameras live. Uh, David, uh, you can take over. Okay, well, thank you. Um, so there are three, there are three Disability Advisory Board members on right now. Um, and I'll, well, I think, give an opportunity for each of us to all of our comments. Um, thanks to my peop our people for hanging in there. We had a meeting uh, five to six today, so we're uh, this is our second meeting. But I think uh, this plan was really interesting, and I have a feeling that each of our our people are going to have some comments. So, Lisa, do you want to? We'll start with you. All right. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thanks for giving us a chance to uh, share some thoughts with you. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, for the, I have, I have a couple comments. Do you want me to just start as a non, not disability type thing? I just have a couple comments on what you all were discussing. Can you tell me the competition pool? When I was a member, you're right. Most adults, we hung out there when it wasn't competition. What, now that you're pulling the adults away from that, I mean, adults are still gonna have to be there to do the laps. So you think, how else is that competition pool gonna be used? Could that be kind of the, how many, what's the feet? What's the level? Three feet, four feet, what's the? Uh, well, 
I imagine we could use it more for swim lessons too. So if we, if there's no competition, there's, you know, but there's always lap swimmers. <laughs> so the adults yeah. are still swim their laps. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like it's the like adults adult still hangout. there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not yeah. that they're not allowed anymore. <laughs> Everybody- we, weren't, we weren't trying to take them away from using it. It's, they had expressed it other than the laps. They didn't have a body of water to really relax yeah no I, I agree because i was kind of yeah when my kids got older i didn't know where to go you know type of a thing like where do i hang uh usually it was by the trees for the shade but okay so that i'm just thinking it might be underutilized now that the adults are going to be pulled from there but you know. we didn't want to put other amenities on it because then they would be really in the way we felt of of that pool which its main use is yeah I, I'm just agreeing with everyone because as being a family of five foot, five feet and under, including myself, that area that you were just discussing where the, uh, you know, where the slides kind of enter, it was even difficult for me at times to, to be in there uh, being short. So I, I'm just going to give a general comment that that kiddie pool is used for a very, very short time. I mean, and I know that we spent a lot of time in the intermediate and it was so crowded. This was back in 1995, 1997, when the pool, we had to limit pool membership and, you know, parents are in there with their kids at age five, six, seven, eight. And that middle pool had so much use. So I, I'm just expressing concern. I'm not a member any longer. My kids are grown, but I would fear that the kiddie pool is not going to be as crowded and there's a lot of space there. And that intermediate pool that I spent many a time in, it just seems like it's, there's got to be a little bit better solution for, I think the overload in that. And, you know, now that you have the beach entry, I feel like kids that are age four are going to want to hang out with their older siblings. It's going to get even more crowded. Yeah. Well, as as we would increase that addition to the to the L shaped pool, you could simultaneously um, reduce the the waiting area, trade off the the sizes. Yeah. Well, I, from from what I'm hearing, actually, it might be just good not to have a beach entry on that pool, and just start say at two feet and go to four. On the on the addition to the main pool. This pool right here. Yeah. No beach entry, just so that it's all just like those next step up kids. This is for the littler kids. It might even be more entertaining to an eight year old just because it's cool to have sprinkler systems and all the things. Yeah. Okay. Bells and whistles. But I, I yeah. think maybe getting rid of the beach entry. I don't know how everybody else feels about that. But yeah. based on where they stand now, let me forgive me for asking this. I just want to make sure I understand you. The second group, did you say they're the ADA board? As yeah. A, as a I disability? Just, I just wanted to, this is from a parent. I said, I just want to take myself before I jump into the disability <laughs> as a oh, parent okay. of two, two kids that kind of went through it. I just know my three-year-old would want to be going into that intermediate to watch the five-year-old and we'd be hanging out on that beach, you know, access, but I'm all for access, but I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to envision how I would use it, not having a child with a disability, right? I'm going to use that as a, I'm going to watch my older kid with my younger kid on this fun little beach access. So it's possible, for example, that we could um, get rid of the beach entry, but still keep the ramp down. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm not proposing to get rid of the ramp that it's just how that pool is going to be used. So, all right, I'm going to move on to the (laughs) disability (laughs) part of it. Um, as far as all of the grounds, where are steps? Because I see you said that the adult pool has an elevation. You're kind of sitting up higher. Are there steps associated with that? And I don't see a ramp or. Yeah, there's a ramp there, um, right there. You have ramp access to every level. Okay. Okay. And, And down below the waiting pool, Monica, if you go below the waiting pool, down there, to straight down below the waiting pool. That's a giant ramp right below where you are, down to that level. So all the different levels are accessed by ramps? Yes. Okay. okay. As well as right 
right there there's a set of stairs there for but there's a, a ramp access to everything also you know some okay. have some have both to give you better flow for those who don't who wouldn't need to right need the ramp and then i see the shade um you have the shade is there I guess you can just add as much as you want, but I'm just thinking like even in the kiddie pool, a lot of the younger kids might be where the beach access is, like where they might be sitting and playing, um, just making sure we have coverage for, uh, you know, anyone even just in those more shallow areas. It kind of, you kind of have them where they're sitting, but I'm just wondering if we can put a few where, you, you know, somebody's you can, child can be sitting. You can, you can put shades over, as much of it as you like okay. um the but yes currently in the baby pool it really in in all three of the pools um the shade is over whether it's a chair that you sit in or a bench that you can sit on or a wall that you can sit on mm -hmm. and then now do any of the pools have lifts or is it all your 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 um your competition pool has all lifts. That would just be lifts. There's no ramp into there. And then um, I forget my data now. There's a lift right here too. Yeah. And, and I think we had a secondary lift into that pool because that's of the size. You need more than one means of, of entry. So we have one in the intermediate pool and one in the competition pool. Yes. They're not shared, right? Correct. Not, they're, okay. All right. And in this plan, are the bathrooms being modified? The restrooms and locker areas? Or is this not addressing? We weren't, we weren't working on your bathrooms. I don't know what. I know Monica had been working on the bathrooms. I don't know what's going on there. Yeah, we we already started a little bit of a project in the bathroom. So we had a little bit of a plan for that before Brent kept going. Um, so right now, this last summer or last yeah, summer, we we improved the HVAC. Um, and there are some notes as to some of the um, accessibility issues that we have in there. I know there's some sink accessibility issues, locker accessibility issues, um, and uh, also in the shower. So we were also already addressing um, those, but yeah, like I said before, and I believe in one of your meetings that I'd be glad to take you down there and we could go through and discuss that too. So are there plans to redo those this year or what, what's the time frame? No, because the quotes came back way too high <laughs> yeah. to be able to do the modification. So we started with the HVAC plan okay. and um, we couldn't finish, we couldn't do the whole project. Okay, so we should probably take a look at that and then anticipation potentially for not this year, obviously, but, uh, you know, maybe the next year. I would think that those would be worked on prior to this, you know, prior to this being done, this new concept here, but. Yeah, the bathrooms need. Um, yeah. I think we all can agree that the bathrooms need help. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're making small modifications this year, um, you know, less expensive, maybe replacing some trash cans and, you know, fixtures, um, but not what we really need to do. Okay. And then just, I assume in the um, concession area, I mean, we've kept in mind as far as having ADA compliant uh, tables, you know, access to the counters and all that. So if we're making modifications, is that all being uh, taken place in the plan here? Yes, that's correct. It would. Okay. And don't forget too, we're only in, we're at the broad stroke concept phase. Yeah. In, in, in general, all, all, all accesses are, are considered in the broad stroke plan, but we don't have we didn't, right. you know, this, we're not in full design. So, but okay. yes, the intent is that, cause that's, that's a big part of, of what we do. Um, I'm a big, um, I'm a big fan of the accessibility because, mm -hmm. um, you know, implementing, uh, them, I, we find that they work, uh, well for everybody. You don't need to be disabled, you know, it, 
at 55 now, I, uh, I'm still able-bodied, but I take the ramp instead of the stairs, you know? Right. So it's, uh, it, it works well for, so I, I, I we, right. we and then, so for, we, we have that everywhere. Yeah. Right. So we have the uh, proper, you know, ADA compliance uh, ramps in the adult pool and then in the intermediate. Now, we don't have to have it in the kiddie pool, correct? As long as it's sloped into the deepest end. Is that the. Say that. Say that again. So in in the kiddie pool, in the waiting pool, mm -hmm. as long as the sloped entry extends to the deepest part of the pool, I think that is considered compliant. What how does. Right. How is that sloped? You go, yes, it goes beach entry from zero to 18 inches up depth, water depth. And 18 inches is the the depth of the water. Okay, so yeah. that we don't need a, we don't need handrails is what I'm saying because it has that slope. Correct. And they don't um, want, the um, you know, we reread ADAG many times. Um, yeah. That um, they really don't want, um, from all our interpretations, handrails in a wading pool correct correct it, and um yeah so we we never do and i, I I'm no not, you, I, don't, you don't want them in the wading pool but as long as the wading pool has the, the proper slope to the deepest end you're safe and yeah, yeah they do find the handrails are dangerous for younger children yes. they tend to play on them and yeah. yes okay yeah. all right that's all i have thank you very much Okay, we will move to Dave Rogers. May I, David, before I, you answer, may I, may I ask a question of everyone that was talking before I forget it? When you were talking about taking the ramp away from the addition on the, on the main pool, what do you, would you replace that with just a, a wall that drops in or would you put steps down that end like you have now in your intermediate pool? where you have steps going across the end or would you just have it a drop, a drop down or would you have steps go down that end? Like you currently have. I'd like steps. Steps. It's nice to sit on yep. versus just the wall. Steps. Yep. Okay. I think kids who can't sit, can, can't swim, can sit there and watch their younger brothers and stuff. They're, it, yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No problem. Um, overall, I, I was uh, quite impressed. This is the first time I've really seen this uh, operation. Um, I think Lisa uh, struck on the majority of the uh, questions that were going through my mind in terms of uh, elevations and so forth and so on as long as it's overall um i'll just call it overall ramped at the proper uh, uh slopes and so forth and so on that that takes away a lot of the problems the devil's always in the details as you said we, at this point you're not at the point where you're saying this is going to be eight inches high and this is going to be seven inches wide and so forth and when that comes along that's uh, where we start to to really look at it but overall um uh, this seems uh, a logical uh, approach. I, I would second uh, Lisa's comments relative to the uh, to the restrooms being something that ought to be done sooner rather than later, uh, because that's an overall uh, issue um, throughout the, uh, the the parks and rec uh, environment. Right. That's all I would have. Okay, thank you. Okay, I think it is, it is my turn. Well, I, I think I'm going to steal uh, something from Lisa's playbook, and I'm going to make a start with a non-disability related comment. So uh, I don't know if anyone else actually used this pool when they were growing up, but um, I, so I may be on, the only one on the call that used this as a kid. And as I will admit that was a while ago. Um, but I, I want to echo the comments and amplify them related to the intermediate pool that I believe both of the Michaels on the park and rec board and Lisa made as well. Uh, the intermediate pool is, 
used a lot by a lot of people. I think it's a big draw and a big attraction. And I remember as I was getting older in the intermediate pool, it was a little crowded. And I went down for the first time to the, to the big pool, the L. And I, and I went into that pool and um, I remember swimming a little bit. And then I was going to stand because you can stand in the intermediate pool. And in the big pool, I could not stand at all. I think it's like on that end, what is it, like five or six feet to start? Five. Yeah. So it is, it's, it's, it's quite deep. Um, and so it's hard. What I'm trying to say is it's hard to think that the upper end of the existing L-shaped pool is going to take the place of the intermediate pool. It's just, it's too deep. Um, and so it, the design where you're making that addition pool, but you're kind of making it smaller, um, it just seems in net, you're kind of actually losing intermediate pool space. And I, I don't know if that's wise, given how big of a draw the intermediate pool is. So that, I'll, I'll leave that comment at that. This is, that's kind of park and recs. Uh, well, do you, kind of territory. Well, with with what you said, do you agree with what the suggested changes were to increase the size of that, get rid of the ramp, and then do you, and that type of thing? Do you agree with those changes? From what I see, it's it's still too small. So can you go to the overlay one where you have like the pink? Yeah. So if you look at the 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 peach new, I'll call it the new intermediate pool. Okay. And you kind of compare it to the footprint of the original intermediate pool. Mm -hmm. It's kind of that's kind of underneath the uh, the uh, yeah. Exactly. Pool. Right. It just visually, it looks smaller. Well, uh, we're talking about substantially increasing that is what. Yeah. Was recommended. I I, I think I I would. I think that that's a very good idea to make it bigger. And I, and I just think it's also important to realize that the, the, the t upper part of the L-shaped pool is just not going to, to think of it as a, an extension of the intermediate pool. I just, it's just too deep to, um, to serve that function. Well, while we're on this, what depth is everyone recommending that that pool be from what to what then? I would do it the same as the current intermediate pool. Yeah, I, I think two two to four feet is I think was was it's two and a half to two and a half to four. Monica, what's yeah. the depth of the uh, the baby pool currently? I think it goes up to eighteen inches, but I could be wrong. Is there any chance it's less than a foot? I think it's a foot. Could be. So yeah. Um, so David, thank you for letting Park and Rec uh, come back into this for a second. Uh, I, if that center, if that new intermediate pool is only going to 18 inches, you're cutting out a huge, huge, huge tranche of people who are going to swim in that pool. Huge. And that's your whole lesson pool. Not your whole lesson pool. That's a major lesson pool. And now you get all your lessons out of there. So I apologize, David, for jumping in, but um, why don't we let David keep going? If we could come back to this after that topic, um, I, I, because I, I'd like to let that, him go. So yeah, no, they, you know, it's fine. You know what? My my goal was to really just highlight that issue again and tee it up so you guys can um, re just have a, a another discussion about how much intermediate pool space you're going to have because. <laughs> Again, it always seemed that that space is a big draw, and you're, I, this plan looks like it kind of net you're, de you're decreasing it. So I'll, I'll just switch to the disability-related comments, and I really don't have many. Lisa covered, I think, the main ones. I, I think there, there are two things that came to mind. One, I think that it's going to be important if you're going to have these accessible ramps that the pool is probably also going – should consider purchasing – um, pool access wheelchairs. So people with disabilities who have mobility impairments or are wheelchair bound are going to need a wheelchair to be able to access these pool, these new pools with the ramps. And so 
you should not expect them to be able to supply that wheelchair on their own. So I think that the township would probably need to invest in in wheelchairs of that sort. I know there are different types um, for people with different levels of disability, both physical and cognitive. But that's something that I think the the pool is going to have to think about um, when these these uh, changes come into place. Another thing that that I was thinking about is this new this new uh, I don't know if the word is waiting pool the the pool that's 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 for children I think you said up to the age of eight and their caregivers so the pool that's currently over the intermediate current intermediate pool in this drawing mm -hmm. so I, I think that there's I think it sounds like from an accessibility perspective that it would be that it meets standards but I think and we were talking about this in our meeting earlier today Lisa was bringing up this point the idea of making sure that spaces are not just accessible but they're inclusive so I think it might be worth worth thinking about and this may not need to be an, on a big higher level plan, but maybe as you drill down more, are there ways kind of, um, I know there's going to be like, I don't know, toys or things that can engage children in that pool. Correct. Yes. Yeah. On the, on the, on the ramp and all around the pool. Right. So I think that as those things are being designed, that they should be designed in a way that's inclusive for children with disabilities. So I, I think that that, again, that is, um, I think that's important. We have, a, we try and make, we have facilities, playgrounds that are inclusive for children with disabilities in our township. And I think that that kind of thinking should be extended to this pool, but especially to, to that, to that setting. Okay. So I think that those are, those are my comments and thank you for, for presenting this and, and explaining everything to us. My pleasure. Thank if you. you. If you have any suggestions of those types of features, please um, forward them to Monica to forward on to us. Okay. I think that the best thing we, we would do is probably do some research and get, and get back to Monica um, on, on ideas. Cause I'm sure that there are, People have spent a lot more time thinking about specifics on that than we have. Yeah. But we do well, have some resources. I'm, I'm, I'm coming up a little. The reason I asked that is I'm coming up a little dry. I have to, I have to research a little more as we, you know, we work with like every manufacturer out there and I'm trying to think of, I'm trying to think of ones that I saw where they, where they list them specifically as that, you know, so we will look into that into that more. But if you see something also, please let me know. It, it doesn't need to be something that's necessarily exclusively for people with disabilities, but something that is inclusive of people with disabilities. So right. it's so kind of designed with thinking of uh, not not only thinking of able bodied people, but thinking of people with disabilities as well. Yeah. So that both people who have and don't have disabilities would be able to enjoy it. Right. Okay. I understand. And just to, just to end the story that I began with, when I realized how deep the uh, L-shaped pool was, I went back to the intermediate pool. It, it wasn't time to, to upgrade just yet. Thank you, David. Sure. And thank you, uh, Disability Advisory Board. I know that this was a double meeting day for you. So um, thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Um, All right. Mike, if I'm going to leave. So thank you. All right. Thanks, Lisa. <laughs> All right. I'm going to leave as well. Take care. Ma, I got a quick question, kind of procedurally. Mm -hmm. so, so we're having another meeting about this in some point in the future right yeah would that be a joint meeting again or would that just be us not that that matters so much but that's just a curiosity um i think at this point it'd be us i mean we've heard the the feedback and then is that and then, and at such a meeting we would be voting to 
uh, promote this plan to the Board of Supervisors? Or voting to or to not vote, vote a concept to the Board of Supervisors? Yeah, essentially what we want to do is pare it down to one master yep. concept. Yep. Whether we're going to do everything, it's just kind of like a... Yeah. Have. And then we'll bring that to the Board of Supervisors for them to adopt. Then after that, um, Brent would file it with the state so that we could go um, in the future. It's, it's on the record, um, all the things that we did in this process. Yeah. So that we could apply for grants. So then from like a high level, if we all were just like, we like concept one, uh, definitely need to rework depth, uh, you know, uh, rework the the ratios of water space to age groups to make sure that it, it fits because we think it might be missing that. Does that need to be figured out before this is entered into the books and records as the master plan? Like, does the master plan go into the depth of that pool? Or is it more speaking to the fact that, that that pool is designed to be for zero to eight and the park and rec board might think that that that, that, that means it needs to be more on the deeper end um, it's, than, it's, than what's being proposed it's, today? It's supposed to give shapes, sizes, depths, dimensions, that type of decisions now, okay, is what they want to see when the state gets it. Um, they're, they, they, in the narrative, you talk about the ideas behind it of what ages it's used for and so on. With all that said, here's the magic of how the, it works with the state. They want to see all that now to approve your plan and give you funding. If, if in, you know, and this study is good for a number of years with the state. Um, so suppose two years from now, you decide you want to implement, you go from the money, they, they have your plan and so on. At that, at that point, they'll let you change it all again if you want to. It's often, sometimes it gets rewritten, but they want those specifics now to have their plan in place, but it's, they're, they're not, it's often then that in a couple of years, the owner changes their mind and they want something else and then, they, they usually let them do that. So it has to be, <laughs> has to be cut and dry now, but you can, to get through this and then you can always change it later if you want. It's typically outward. You know, Mike, um, it's similar to think about uh, Memorial Park. We had the plan for Memorial Park, right? And um, when we were in the middle of the grant process, we were talking about the pickleball course and how we need more pickleball course and tennis course. We made that modification. Yeah. You, you can make modifications to a point with, with, yeah. Like the ADCNR grant. Um, yeah. So that was something that they, because it didn't change the whole scope. Yeah. So, so that was something we were able to do. Yeah. I guess for me personally, I'd really like to see like either before the next meeting or like, or, or improved for the next meeting or, or somewhat like verified for the next meeting that the amount of water space that we have from the baby pool to the five foot pool. I'd like to know what the, what, what it is in the old and what it will be in the new uh, to ensure. Cause I think most of us that still that have kids in that age would, would say that that probably needs to go bigger, not smaller uh, if we're going one way and, and that it's going to be hard. I kind of love this plan, but I do very strongly agree that, that like that, that I do not, I will like, I need to see that, that ratio, um, the, uh, you know, yeah, that's, that's no problem. Yeah. Um, that, that would be a huge concern because, because if, because if the new intermediate pool is only going to go to 18 inches, then what we're really doing is making a huge baby pool. 18 inches is not deep. I mean, I, I mean, 18 inches is if I'm sitting down 18 inches, probably, you know, may not get over, I guess it would just get over your legs if you're sitting down on the bottom of that pool. So, so I, I think for, you're really just making a huge baby pool. Um, that two and a half feet, I believe that that two and a half feet in current intermediate pool gets to three, maybe even three and a half feet by the line. And that line is not halfway through. So I believe that although it's two and a half feet, that it very quickly starts sloping into a deeper, deeper, deeper section. So the reality is, is that it, our current intermediate pool is mostly a three foot and bigger pool. Um, I, I'm not, I've never measured this. I'm, I'm 
I'm just, I'm, just going, I'm just going by. I've spent a lot of time there recently. And, and my, and, and honestly, every inch matters when you're talking about a three-year-old, a four-year-old, a five-year-old, like the difference between having the water here and having it to here is significant in their ability to have fun in the pool. Um, so that would be, you know, so I would have a hard time personally approving any of the plans without having a good sense that we're not um, reducing that too drastically. Mm -hmm. um, so that would, reducing which dress? Not reducing the footprint oh, no. of water right. in the under, I would say. No, four, I, I agree. Four, four, feet to, four feet to 18 inches. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Monica, I would, I, if, I would think that 18 more, inches, did you say? If from 18 inches. Yeah. Like, um, uh, I Brent, thought, or, I thought from two and a half, really from two and a half to four. Yeah. Two and a half to four. Because I would, I would venture to guess that half, if not more of all of our swim lessons are in that pool. Yes. That's the, that's our swim lesson pool. Yeah, I mean, don't worry too much. I got everything you guys said, and that's not yeah, cool. so hard to change. I appreciate it, Brent. Um, yeah. So um, I don't know if, if – does anybody else have any comment from the park board? If, oh, no, if no I'm one sorry. has any further comment, we would ask for public comment if there is any. I don't know. Uh, no comment from me. I'm sorry. One more comment. I'm sorry. If you make the concession stand bigger, I'm going to assume that you're going to want to charge more. And then if you're also opening up to food trucks, you're then kind of, you know, hey, here's a bigger area. We're going to charge you more for it and we're going to open it up to competition. So I would just well, think that, and, that and, this kind of work counterintuitive. And our our thought process in that was um, if you had a special event or something, we weren't anticipating you wanting to um, replace your concession at all. I think your concession is my, is fantastic. Um, so I, uh, you know, it was just an option that if you had uh, an, an event um, and and you wanted something additional, it was in no man no way meant to be implied to. Um, subsidize or you know or replace your concession because i wouldn't i wouldn't change that at all that's that's like that's all that's awesome what you have going on there they do a wonderful job i, I imagine mike it'd be also for other vendors so say we decide we wanted to bring in some you DJ. know yeah something <laughs> yeah you know it's an access for anything not just for i got you yeah yeah, yeah. All right. So you want us? Do you want me? Do you want uh, Park and Rec to go blank again so we can take public comment, Monica? Um, there isn't any public comment. So okay. um, if you're ready to adjourn, I think that's yeah. all. Right. Motion to adjourn. Uh, Second. Motion to adjourn. Approved. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks.